If you are doing the belt, this is a really lovely, quick and easy one. You'll have four belt pieces and place um, them uh, right sides together in pairs of two. So here we go, I've got two on each one and make sure just that the um, uh, these diagonal ends are aligned so that they're together. And then stitch um, down here and down here to join each one into one belt piece and then press the seam open. So you've now got two great big long belt pieces joined in the middle with the seam pressed open. Um, change, flip one so that it is right side up, one so that it's wrong side up, and then place them together so that they're right sides together. And then we are going to um, get them all lined up neatly and um, pin them together. Whoopsie daisy, I, I have just done what I was about to tell you not to do, which is make sure that the ends are matching. So I need to turn one of mine around, so I'm just going to turn it around, still keeping them right sides together, but there we go, if I join that up now and come along to the end, ta-da, so now my ends go together. So I'm going to clip, I'm going to line these up neatly all the way around and clip the whole thing together, and then I'm going to stitch along one side, pivoting here, pivoting here, along here, all the way along, all the way along. I haven't joined those up yet. There we go, all the way along, down one side, the other side, and then all the way along, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. And then when I get close to where I left it before, I'm gonna leave a gap to turn it um, about, um, about that big. So it doesn't really matter exactly how far, but let's say, I don't know, two to three inches is what I would leave to turn it for this kind of thickness of fabric. The thicker the fabric, you want to leave it a little bit more. Um, and just FYI, if you want to hack the belt, um, if you've got leather, you could um, make yourself a leather belt to go with it. I've seen some people use some gorgeous store-bought belts where they just change the width of, of the length of the... Um, of the belt loops, obviously we've already done that bit, so you would need to attach the correct loop belt loop at the time, but um, it, it's a great jacket to wear store-bought belts with as well. Once you've done that, um, then we're going to clip the corners. I have stitched my belt now, I'll show you that. So I've used half inch seam allowance. Um, if you want a narrower or a wider belt, you could use more or less, but that's what will fit nicely in the um, in the button loops. Um, and you, uh, belt loop, sorry, and you can see I've left a hole here. It doesn't matter where you leave it. I wouldn't do go too close to the end because then it's hard to turn through, um, but I've got mine relatively close to the end. Um, I do not like to leave my gap over where the two pieces of the belt are joined, so I wouldn't do it from there to there. If you want to do it more in the center, do it a little bit further along. That way, um, this bit here is um, is is held open by the stitching. You're not trying to do that as well when we're top stitching in the next bit. So I need to reduce some of this bulk. So I've got my scissors here. Let's see if I can get this to focus on the fabric. And I am just um, gonna clip it relatively close to the stitching, but not all of the way. And I wanna just get rid of the bulk of the corners so that when I turn it through, it's nice and, um, uh, nice and flat in that corner there um, and do the other end there we go and then I'm gonna find my little hole where is my hole where is my hole there we go found it and if I just turn it through so I'm gonna poke this through here like that now this is a really thick fabric so this is quite tricky to do it just doesn't want to push like that so what I am going to do is sit and do it probably in front of the TV a little bit later and I will just tease it through with my fingers like this. So rather than pushing from inside the hole, I'm going to tease it through pulling from the outside. I will also probably use, this is my um, point turner that I've used um, lots, it's got pen that's all a bit old now. I will probably use this really sturdy end here, not the pointy end that could that could break if I put too much pressure on it, but I'll use that to help me a bit. So I'll pull it and then I'll push it a little bit. And it takes a little bit of working to get it through. If you find it too hard, it might be that there's too much bulk. And then what you can do is go back and just trim your seam allowance um, so that it's roughly in half. 
I mean, even down to like about a third of the seam allowance, that'll really reduce the bulk um, so that it's a lot easier to turn through. Once you've got it turned through, use the pointy bit of your point turner or a knitting needle or a chopstick, something blunt but pointy. That's such a contra con uh, contradiction, but blunt but pointy object to get into those corners to poke them out so that they're nice and square. Well, they're not square, but nice and pointy. Um, and then press it flat. And then what we're going to do last is top stitch all the way around it. So I've turned my belt through, and as you can see, I've got it as far through as I can. This is a really thick felt, and I have trimmed that corner and poked it and poked it, and I can't get it any further through. So that's as good as I'm going to be able to get mine. I can't get it really crisp. So um, hopefully with yours, your fabric is not as thick, and you can get it all the way through to make a nice crisp point. Um, what there is to do here is this is my the hole where I've turned it through. I've pressed all whoops, sorry, I've pressed all the seam allowances um, and I've pressed these down as well. So they are now, if I tuck the raw edges inside, uh, that makes a straight line so you can't see it. It's all tucked in. And what I'm gonna do um, uh, now is stitch all the way around the outside edge, including straight over my little hole here. There's still threads poking out. <laughs> I'm going to tuck them all in and then, um, oh, there's more. Um, there we go. I'm going to tuck them all in, stitch all the way around the outside. And then if you want to, you could stitch decorative straight lines down it or you could just leave it as is. It's completely up to you. Uh, for the kids, if you want this belt to not fall off the coat, what I recommend you do is fold it in half and find your centre back point, or there's also the, the seam here for the centre back point, and place that at the centre back of the coat, and you could stitch that um, either hand or machine to the centre back seam uh, where it lines up um, in between the, um, at, on the button loops, or you could stitch it at the sides, um, at the side seam. Just make sure you put it through the button loops and it is exactly where you want it to be and it's flat and not twisted and all of that and then just tack that to the side seams for the kids. I wouldn't do that for the ladies because I want to be able to tie mine up, have it loose, I want to be able to do that kind of thing. But kids, I know I've got um, for my children a couple of coats with um, loose belts. Um, uh, obviously not when they're a baby, but when they're a bit older and you can, um, and it drives me crazy, the belt's falling out all the time. So um, I like to tack them down. So there's a little tip about that. So go off and top stitch your belt now. This is my finished belt. I wanna show you uh, what I've done with the stitching here. So I have stitched all the way around it, which is the two, let me focus this for you. There we go, which is two outside rows of stitching, this one and this one. And then I've run one row of stitching straight through the middle so that I can get it um, so that I can get them evenly spaced and then one row of stitching through that channel and one row of stitching through that channel. Um, if you want to add a buckle, that's another little hack that you could do. Um, the way I would do that is I would get to the end here and I would chop the end off and then um, uh, feed, my, feed that through my belt buckle, turn it um, through so that it makes a bit of a loop and then if I had raw edges I would tuck them under like that and then I would stitch, um, if I can get that to focus on the black there, I would stitch that um, through like that with the belt buckle sticking out this end. Um, so I mean this kind of belt leads itself really well to a buckle so if you wanted to do that go for it, if not um, your belt is now finished. We are now on the hood and the hood lining, hurrah! Um, this is an optional piece, you do not need to have it. It is not actually attached to the coat permanently. Um, it is attached by um, uh, poppers or buttons at the bottom. So um, if you do do it, you can take it on, take it off. You don't have to have it on the whole time. You're gonna need three pattern pieces, your hood patch and lining your hood and your lining and your hood facing. So a couple of things to note before you actually get sewing is that the fabric you cut out for the, uh, for the hood patch to here, the lining, you chop it off there. So it actually ends up shorter. So I'll show you this. This is my um, hood patch here that I've cut out with my lining on top. And if I place my pattern piece, oh, I've not, place that exact but anyway that gives you the idea so it goes when I cut out my main fabric it goes to there but for the lining 
um, I you could either just chop it off or if you want to use the pattern piece again you could fold it back you'll notice that my lining here we go if I spread that over only comes to there it doesn't go whoops it doesn't go the whole length it is only that long so um, this is where you can see I've cut my lining shorter than my hood patch sorry my lining my hood patch lining is shorter than my hood patch fabric. <laughs> there we go. The exact same thing with the actual hood itself. So um, this, uh, I have just chopped it off here rather than folded it back. And I've got several pattern pieces like this where I just keep sellotaping them back on. I reuse my pattern piece and then I chop it off again the next time. Folding it is easier. It means you don't have to sellotape it. But um, I like to get when I cut out it as precise as possible. So this is how the pattern piece was initially. This is my hood and my hood lining. So my hood with the fabric comes all the way out here, but for my lining, I cut through there. So my lining is a smaller pattern piece. So now, how do we put this together? This is the hood piece here. And what we are going to do um, is attach the um, hood patch to the hood first. So on your hood patch, you will see that there is, if you open it out, there's a narrow end and a wide end. The narrow end goes to the neck and the wide end goes to the, um, goes to the, the bit that will be up by your eyebrows. So the way I do this is I've now got one hood piece facing right side up. And then I get my patch here and I've got it right side down. So I'm going to place it uh, down onto my garment and um, uh, I'm going to line it up around this outside edge here. Now this is a little bit tricky because it is a curved edge and you do have to ease this on. The reason you, e easing it on means that one piece is precisely the same distance or slightly shorter along the seam line which is half an inch in from the edge and this is what we had if you remember um, at various other points like in the armhole where uh, we're going to clip it or pin it to the hood along this first straightish bit here and then along this straightish bit here but then when we get to this section here you'll find it doesn't just easily um, uh, reach out here. If I just lay it on, it goes to about there. But <clears throat> when I actually, I haven't pinned this yet, but when I do, what I'll need to do is um, pin to about here and then get the halfway point and bring that there and then the halfway point and then the halfway point and ease it through like that. If you get stuck, you can run a gathering stitch along the curve, this curve part of the hood patch. I mean, obviously the hood patch is straight, but the bit that's going to curve around here. Um, if you have absolutely no ease at all in your garment and you cannot just slightly, you know, maneuver it and pull it, then what you can do is just clip a little tiny, just like quarter of an inch into these little, this edge along the, this curved part so that the garment, so that the fabric can open up like that as you pin it around. Exactly the same as with the sleeve, when you clip or pin this on, you are going to be aligning the um, uh, the raw edges in terms of their length here, but they will not be aligned in terms of their, um, so they'll be the same length, but, but one will be um, hmm, sh sh shorter or longer, that's what the word I was searching for, at the raw edge. Along the seam line, it's going to match exactly, but because one is one piece is the hood is curved and the hood patch is straight, you're going to be doing the same thing, putting your thumb in in order to smooth this over. But if you were to hold it straight, that then opens up and the outside bit is wobbly. So I'm going to clip all of this on and then show you. Um, if you get stuck with this, um, I would always recommend that you make sure the narrow part, by the way, is at the um, at the bottom end that's going to be the um, the bottom of the hood. You know it's going to be the bottom of the hood because when you look at the pattern piece here, this text is upright. So um, place this so that you can read it and then at the bottom, that's where the bottom of the hood is and it says lining cut here on most sizes um, for when you've got, when you cut your lining. So we're doing it with the main fabric first. 
make sure the narrow part of the hood patch is there, the wide part is at the top. If you find you absolutely cannot ease it, like let's say you are using a thick nylon fabric, for example, that just does not ease, and you can, and the half inch seam allowance is too deep for you to be able to do this thing, um, then what I would recommend is start pinning at the bottom. Well, you could, you could cut a slightly longer pattern piece. And if you're gonna do that, add the length on here at the wide end, not at the narrow end. Um, if you are, um, you don't have any more fabric, let's say, and you still just can't ease this on because this is one of the trickiest easing ones, then start at the bottom, clip all the way up, ease it around as best you can, leaving as much of the hood patch as possible. And let's say you get to um, this point here and you just cannot do the last bit. You could, you could attach another little bit of fabric to extend this, or you could just chop your hood up to meet it. Do not ever trim at the bottom because this neckline matches the neckline of your trench. And if suddenly you cut up to here, the neckline is going to be bigger and your hood is not going to fit on your trench. So make sure to keep this, this exactly aligned here. It does fit. We have measured this again and again and again. And along the seam line, it definitely does fit. But if you are using a fabric with absolutely no ease, you might find this tricky. So there's a few little tips for you. So I'm gonna go away and clip this and then I will show you how I've done it. I thought actually you might wanna see me clip this so that you can believe that it does actually fit um, uh, in case you're having um, problems with your fabric. So um, here is the bottom. I've um, just, that's, there's nothing eased or pulled along there that is just um, straight. And then I've done the same thing along the top. Um, I've clipped, there's nothing eased or pulled. It's just straight along there. Now, what I'm left with is this corner. And as you can see, the hood patch goes nowhere near it at the minute. And what I want to do is ease this through. Now, the reason that this is so hard to fit, hang on, I'm going to talk as I do it so that you can see. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is um, attach it halfway and then halfway and then halfway and then ease the other bits in with my thumb. So I'm going to use exactly the same method as we have with the sleeve. I'm just going to talk as I'm doing it. Now, the reason that we have done the hood like the reason we've done the hood like this is um, the the sharp kind of curve at the back fits the back of your head that's why it's so um, so heavily curved around here because that's how human head is shaped um, <clears throat> then um, the um, it's hard to talk and do this at the same time um, the reason it's so hard to ease is because of the how, how um, is it steep or strong? I don't know what you call a curve. Um, how tight the curve is, I think maybe is how you would say it. So, I mean, the curve is sharp. The, the curve is really, really sharp. Um, and that is why it is hard to ease it because um, you're trying to get a straight bit of fabric around a very curved edge. So, as you can see, I'm just going and I'm using tons of pins. Um, so that is the first half of the curve. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, that it's, let's see if I can make this focus. But there we go. Um, you can see it's straight and it's curved. But if I, if I curve that around, try and focus that again for you. Doesn't want to, there's not enough black for it to focus on. Um, anyway, if I curve that around, that is now that is now flat as it's curved, but it's only while it's curved that it will go flat like that. Um, yes, so you, what we could have done when we drafted this is given you a longer hood patch to make it easier to go around the back of the head. But what then happens is you end up with this kind of bulgy patch on the back of the head because you've got a piece of fabric that's not the same length being attached to the one that's there. If, I'm not quite sure if that makes sense. It gives it its, its real 3D effect. And if we had, um, there you go, done. Um, if we had done this curve so that it was less of a curve, for example, it wouldn't have fit the head so well. And if we'd made this longer so that you could just pin it in easily, you'd end up with a bit of, the, this fabric could be, the fabric of the hood would be really nice and strong around the back of the head. But the fabric of the, the, um, the patch, rather than being really smooth with a really nice 3D shape, it would be kind of 
uh, loose and blobbly. It just, <laughs> blobbly, that's so not a word. Um, it just doesn't look as clean. You can try it if you want to, to see the difference of how it happens. But that now, when we turn that through, we sewed that and turned that through, it will have a beautiful 3D effect. And that will just sit open like that so that you get a really nice shaped hood. So that is how many clips I use to do that corner. You saw me do it. It's possible. Go forth and pin your hood and then stitch the seam using half inch seam allowance. So I have stitched this and as you can see, the 3D shape is already there. And when I just place my hood down, the hood patch does not even want to sit flat. That is why we have measured it exactly along the seam allowance and are making you ease it. So I'm really sorry that you're going to have a beautiful hood once you've eased it. Um, yeah, there you go. It's, it just it won't sit flat because it's so well eased in. So there you go. You can see there are no, I haven't, uh, I've, I've kept it right by the edge. There's no little pin tucks. Um, and then as you can see, those edges are properly wobbly underneath but it is flat along the actual seam allowance. It's the edges that are wobbly. So don't be scared by the wobbly edges. Totally normal, that's how it's supposed to be. So what you need to do now is press that um, seam open as best you can. Um, it is a little bit tricky. Again, I would recommend getting a rolled up towel um, or a, a tailor's ham to put underneath so that if you take your curved, um, uh, something curved underneath it's a lot easier to press it open and just when you're ironing that iron it with the tip of the iron because it's really hard to get the whole iron over that because you've got a curved surface so just the tip of the iron to get that open as best you can like that and then we're going to do exactly the same thing to attach the other hood to the other side I'm so sorry you have to do this twice oh there's loads of you who are saying I don't really need a hood anymore it's, it doesn't rain that much where I live um, you do want a hood, they're pretty. So along the top edge, um, and so right side to right side. So this is now where our hood becomes a 3D shape because we've got now the two sides to the hood. So I'm not gonna clip all of this again, make you watch me do it again, um, but I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing um, to go halfway, halfway, and then all of the clips in between to really hold it there. And then what you'll end up with is a lovely, um, space for your head. So uh, um, press this one open and then stitch um, this side, clip and stitch this side and then press that open too. What you might be delighted about is we're now going to do the same thing with the lining. So um, we're going to got the lining, got the lining hood patch. Remember it's shorter this way because it's not got that bit along the edge and the hood patch is shorter um, and you're going to clip and ease into here. Another tip for if you get stuck with this is let's say you only had, you'd gone up to here, like up to here with your straight clips and then you were going to just ease in along here. That's not quite enough. Just undo your clips a bit more, especially kind of around this back edge of the curve um, and then clip through here and then have your straight sections here. So your straight sections, I mean, you can see that's a, like just over the kind of, you know, what nearly two widths of my fingers so it's it's not a wide section for the ladies and for the kids it's even less but if I couldn't ease that in at all what I might then do is kind of let some of the fabric um, roll along here and put some extra clips in there but there should definitely be a straight bit at the beginning so um, same thing with your lining um, attach the hood patch to one side stitch with a half inch seam allowance and then do the same thing with the other side and press it all open now it's time to add the hood facing. Now how the hood facing is going to go is basically where we chopped off that bit along the pattern piece. So this is my hood here and it's going to go really like that and it's going to extend the hood out to be the same sh shape and size. It's going to extend the hood lining out to be the same shape and size as the hood was before we cut that bit off. But um, having that facing there means that you've got this nice warm bit of fabric around um, the top of your head and also that you can't see the lining the second you put your hood up around your face. Um, if you want to do um, a cord to run a cord through there to be able to pull the hood tight um, you'll need to add a grommet which is a little round circular thing or if you don't have one of those a buttonhole here to allow it to come through. I would traditionally do a buttonhole that way to allow it to come through um, so that then it, it came through at the same spot 
but you could um but if you run it um vertically then it will um uh um, it will look more centered, more pretty. Um, it is gonna be on the inside of the hood though, so it really doesn't matter. If you've got one of those buttonholes that comes down and then around and out, so it's got a little hole at the bottom, that's the best type of one to use. I'm not gonna add a cord because I don't want one. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take my hood facing and I folded it in half and I wanna get the exact um, halfway point and I'm going to use a clip to attach that um, cause it doesn't need to be super super precise um, but mostly precise is good <laughs> so use a pen or a clip doesn't matter um, and then I've got my hood lined up here and then um, we want to now make sure that we get it the correct right sides to right sides and the correct curve so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to turn my hood so that it's right way out and place it so that the long this is the neck edge here and that's the head so your head is going to go in this bit there like that and then i'm going to take my curve and i had already placed my clip on this side of the curve which is the um, the longer side of the the curve uh, because it's this side is where your face goes this side is where your head goes so i've already got that so i know that that bit there is a bit that gets attached it's not that way it's that way um, then I'm going to take I want to find the midway point actually of my facing as well so take your hood facing and I'm going to just fold that in half and find the center point there we go so that's that's halfway across my hood facing and then I'm going to flip it up so they're right side to right side and take one of these clips out and place the other one in. So that is now attached in the center front and then I want to keep it so it's going to be curving the opposite direction. This curve runs this way, the hood facing curve runs that way. That's correct because once you've got it stitched on they'll both then run in the same direction. See round and round but to stitch it on we have to make them fit like this. So I'm going to go and I'm going to attach it, clip it at the very bottom next and then I have to, um, this doesn't need easing, but it will need a bit of jiggery pokery to kind of get that along that line because it's curved in a different direction. So I'm going to do it the same way I would ease it by taking roughly the halfway point and then halfway and then halfway and then halfway again. So I'm going to do that all the way along and then I'm going to do the same thing, attach it at this side here. And clip and then I'm going to go clip, clip 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 all the way around as many as I need to be able to get that on and then I'm going to sew that on using a half inch seam allowance making sure I keep the rest of the hood oh that's not clipped on I'll go back and do that properly making sure I keep the rest of the hood um, out of the way so I'm just stitching the hood facing to the hood lining here is my hood facing stitched on and you can see now they both curve in the same direction now, as for which way you press your seam allowances, I think the technical answer for this particular seam is to press it open. But, um, and this might, the people who have been sewing for years might disagree with me, but I would say listen to your fabric. This is a really lightweight fabric. This is a heavy fabric. If I keep, if I press that seam open there, what would happen is I'd end up with a bit of bulk along here and nothing along there, and it would just feel odd on my head and look a bit lumpy. So I've left this facing flat and I've just pressed it towards the lining which is where it naturally wants to go if I just would lay it down like that like it pretty much just went like that after I stitched it and then I just I just pressed it so that it's nice and flat so now we want to attach the hood to the hood facing grab my clips and this is my hood piece here face it so that it's the same way around it's been before. So this is the neckline, this is the front, this is the back of the head. I've got my hood right side out, and then I've got my lining wrong side out. And I'm gonna just put one inside the other. Now what I would recommend, if you've got quite a flimsy lining like I do, but a heavyweight garment, is to put the coat inside, um, the fabric inside, the lining and um, what I've just done here is I've grabbed it by the two ends and then I've just kind of shook it down just kind of like you do a duvet cover into a duvet 
um, and I'll do that into a duvet cover. And then what I want to do is clip all the way around the front edge or pin, down here and then along here. And then we're going to stitch all the way around but leave a gap, I would say, for this kind of thickness of fabric and about maybe three inches wide along that bottom. Because we want to be able to turn it with ease. Now, um, a suggestion for a hack, if you want another one, because I just love hacking patterns, um, is to do a, um, a an elastic, uh, a piece of elastic into the front of the hood um, if you're doing it for a child. So, um, uh, and I want to make sure this is centered. So, um, I'm going to just check that that is... I've got the two centers there. So I've just folded the hood in half so that I can put the hood and the hood facing centered together. And then where there are these seam allowances, I'm going to clip them open so that I don't lose them as, as we start sewing. So um, I will go and um, clip all of that um, in a moment. But um, something you can do is once it's finished and we've turned it through, is sew a channel through here and then insert some elastic up and through, pull it tight so that it squishes it around their little face. Um, we, where we live at, um, at the moment, um, the school uh, the kids were going to is a walk down the hill into the wind and um, often it would be pouring with rain and their little hoods would just blow right off their heads. Um, and if you have a bit of elastic around the face, it holds it down. It makes them look really cute as well. Um, and they like it because it keeps them all nice and cozy and warm in winter. Um, I wouldn't necessarily do it to my hood, but it's um, a great little hack idea for kids. I've clipped all of this together now. So you can see my hood and my hood lining are right sides together. My hood is inside and my lining is over the top. And then I've clipped all the way along the bottom. But what I wanted to show you here, that's not quite flat. Um, what I wanted to show you here is what I do when I know I want to turn something through, but I'm just sewing around in a circle. I have, by mistake, accidentally kept on sewing, whoop, and then not left myself anywhere to turn through. So my little um, thing that I do for myself is I'll put two clips right next to each other, or if I'm using pins, two pins right next to each other, because then I know that's something unusual. I would not normally clip like that unless I'm really easing something in, something like around an almost 90 degree curve. Um, so that tells me as I'm stitching along, oh, that's different, and then I remember to stop. So stitch around the whole way around the hood, all the way around the bottom, all the way around the top edge, leaving a gap at the bottom um, of about three inches to turn it through. I would not recommend that you leave the gap over here where the seams are, because it just makes it a little bit more difficult to turn through and you've got to tuck them all inside in the next step. Whereas here, I'll be able to just tuck that seam allowance inside once I've turned it through, press it flat and it will be absolutely fine. All sewed together and now I've left my little gap at the bottom and I will need to go and clip these corners. So in the same way that we've done previously, I'm going to clip close to but not up um, to the, um, the seam. Um, and then I'm going to do the same on each of the each of the four corners. And then as we come around the hood, either I could use my pinking shears to make those little um, uh, that little kind of diamond shaped in stitching, um, or I can clip little bits into the seam allowance like that, so that um, when it opens out, it turns through okay. And I'll need to do that all the way around that front edge. And then once you've done that, turn it through your hole and give it a bit of a press. I've turned this through now, and what I've done here where I had the gap is I've poked the seam allowances in and I've pressed them so that they're continuous and flat like the rest of them and then clipped all the way around there. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch um, uh, down one side, um, down one side, around the bottom of the neckline, up, all the way up and around and all the way down um, using a... Um, a roughly quarter to one eighth of an inch seam allowance, depending on how thick your fabric is, um, to top stitch it and hold it in place. We don't top stitch the rest of the coat. Um, you could if you really wanted to, but we don't because it creates kind of bagginess around the edges. But this is a small enough piece that it will just hold it so that it sits nicely if you top stitch it. So um, that's why we do it here. If you are doing the um, the hood um, uh, the hood cord, you'll have a little buttonhole or a, um, a grommet either side here on the inside. You will also then want to stitch 
Um, it's one inch in. I actually, when I do it, use this facing edge here as a guide so that I stitch um, nice and smooth. It's not about it lining up on this line. You just want to have a nice width channel, which we found one inch works best. You could do it on that line if you wanted. Uh, we found one inch works best. You're not going to see that from the outside, but you will see the stitching along here. I'm not going to add a hood cord to mine, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to top stitch around. So um, if you're not doing a hood cord, top stitch around. If you are doing a hood cord, hood cord top stitch around and do um, a one inch channel. Just run all the way down like that uh, and make sure you've opened up your grommet and your, and your buttonhole or your buttonhole so that you can actually get the hood cord in and then thread that hood cord through, bring it out and tie knots on the end or put a little dangly thing on the end to stop it them slipping inside. Here is my finished hood. All I need to do now is attach it to the coat. Now you could do um, this using buttons or using poppers. I'm gonna use buttons. Now um, in, the, in the tutorial, you'll notice that we recommend using four buttons to do this or four poppers. Uh, you can use more. So this fabric is quite weighty, so I would actually want to use, um, I think five is a better choice for this particular fabric, um, but um, if your fabric is lighter weight, you could use um, four. Uh, so just see what's gonna fit. If you used three, if you put one here, one here, and one here, this is gonna bag quite a bit as you wear it. So you want enough that it sits nicely against the collar, but not so many that it's all bulky with buttons underneath your collar. So I'm gonna do um, five here. So I'm gonna do um, one, I'm gonna do one buttonhole um, along uh, this way here, and I'm gonna do, oh, that is not horizontal. There we go, and I'm then going to do one on either end, and I want these to be approximately half to three quarters of an inch um, in, probably more like three quarters of an inch actually, in from the edge, because my button needs to be able to sit without coming over the edge of the fabric. So I will show you my button. That's my button there. My button, um, I want it to be close to the edge. I don't want it up here. Um, I want it to be close, but I don't want it hanging over. So um, this is a, a bit of an art versus a science, <laughs> um, uh, which is why we've not marked them. So um, I'm looking for the halfway point is where I want my buttonhole. So I want my buttonhole centered over that little cross just there. That's how I want it to go in the finished garment. And I'm gonna sew my, buttons hor my buttonholes horizontally. And then the same thing here, I want this button to be right on the corner but not hanging over it so I'm looking to center my buttonhole here. Now if you don't know how to work out uh, with your buttonhole um, where it needs to be centered so where you then start it what I'd recommend you do is put your button into your buttonhole maker if you've got one into your buttonhole foot um, and um, sew a practice buttonhole um, on a scrap piece of paper so that you can see how long the buttonhole is for the size of your button and then you'll know where to start it because you can put it up against the fabric. So let's say I had a piece of fabric with the buttonhole, I'd put it against it and I would center it over and go okay great so I need to start my buttonhole right there, right where that top stitching starts and then I would put that into my machine, put my press up, put my needle down here and stitch my button along that way and then it'll be centered exactly where I want it. If you're not sure, just move it in ever so slightly to give yourself a bit more room. Um, <clears throat> then here, I'm, I wanna do five. Normally I would do one here, one here, one here, and one here if I was gonna do four, but because this is quite big, I'm gonna do five and I can't stand it when things aren't centered. So I'm just gonna fold this in half to get my halfway point. So that is it. That's halfway, halfway between, let me check that. Yep, good, that's halfway between. And then I want it, again, that same height away. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here, mark another one. So I'm gonna stitch all of my buttonholes horizontally centered over those markings. And then these buttons then go at a matching point on the collar. So let me grab my collar and I'll show you where they go. Here is my collar. It's not quite, I haven't quite finished my buttons yet. I'm gonna show you those in a moment. Um, and my hood is going to go along 
here so it goes along that way so I want to have when once I've stitched my buttonhole I'm going to have my button just there so that it is on um, on that collar there um, and it should go should fit exactly on like that um, so each of my buttons needs to go on the collar underneath where the buttonhole is and what I would recommend you do is do your buttonhole open your buttonhole and then place a pin through the center point through that middle center point there so if I had done my buttonhole already and I was placing so I've got this aligned exactly where I want it and then I'm going to put a pin straight through the center of my buttonhole and I'll be able to pull it out and see that's where I want my button so then I can stitch my button exactly there and it's in exactly the right spot so if you go ahead and do that, if you're doing the hood and then your hood is complete, and now we're going to stitch on the buttons and finish this coat. We're nearly there.